here's another request. Would you please show how to make cool grayish green blue color for trees landscaping? That's a fun one to play with. I'm assuming uh, this person means the cool grayish green blue that we see happening in the distance in landscape, but the, this person could also be referring to the cool grayish green blue that we see in the deep shadows of landscape. So I'd like to show you something to play with. Now you know I don't like to give formulas. What I like to do is to give suggestions so that you then can play with an idea and discover for yourself its many options. So um, I'm going to go into an area that you might not be familiar with, and that is not using uh, not using blue first of all, and um, and not using uh, well. Let me just show you. I'm going to use just three colors here to sort of show you some possibilities that you might play with. Now, everybody who studies with me knows that my one of my favorite foundational colors is the Rembrandt Viridian. Now, I must emphasize something here. Uh, all Viridians are not the same. The, uh, many brands of Viridian will be a very uh, middle value, kind of milky, opaque color. The Rembrandt Viridian is a very dark, clear, transparent color, very much like phthalo green. So if, if you're not using Rembrandt, Rembrandt Viridian or a Viridian that is uh, pretty much in the same neighborhood with phthalo green, this exercise won't work for you. So that's, that's the core color I'm going to use here. And then another color that might surprise some of you is Ivory Black. Now the brand of Ivory Black doesn't vary so much as the brand of Viridian does because Ivory Black usually ends up being pretty much the same uh, from manufacturer to manufacturer, and that is a cool black. And then the other color I'm going to use is also by Rembrandt, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, this one is Cadmium Yellow Deep, but almost any Cadmium Yellow Deep will probably work. And then, of course, I'm going to be using my Gamnon Titanium White right here. Now, let's see. Let's start with the idea of uh, let's see, how did the, the, the viewer put it? Cool grayish green blue. <clears throat> All right, cool grayish green blue. Let's, be, let's do this thing here. Let's pull a little bit of this Rembrandt Viridian out like that. Now, by itself, it is cool and it is green and it's blue green, but it's not uh, grayish ivory black by itself it's cool and very grayish so what if we mix ivory black then a bit of ivory black into viridian now the next question is in what proportion well in different proportions uh, uh, will give different results so let's just play around with the proportion now you see of course both colors are so dark that when I put them together on the palette we can't really tell the color, what color we're getting as a result. So I'm just going to kind of um, intuitively uh, pull the Viridian into the black uh, until I can see some feeling of dark green, dark grayish green. And you can do that by pulling, let me pull just a little bit more of this in there, it's a good thing to gradually mix, but you can you can tell what color you've got if you just pull your palette knife uh, kind of lightly over the color so that you can see the transparency through through the transparency. But now we have a kind of grayish blue green. Now from there we can begin to 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 um, add some white to it and see what we have. So I'm going to pull some titanium white once again. When you're uh, experimenting with color mixtures, it's it's a good idea to gradually pull one color into another, not just to pick up a color and dab it in the middle of another color. All right, so I'm going to pull a little bit of this titanium white into this bluish green right here, and now we see we do have a coolish, it's cool, it's grayish, and it's blue-green. Now, I have a 
photo here of um, some distant mountains. Uh, we could be working with any subject here, but let's compare. Let's, I'm just going to pull some of this color, and this is about a this is a this is an in shadow, a kind of middle value leaning more towards shadow. Um, so I'm going to pull some on the back of my palette knife, and let's hold it up to about right here. All right. So now what we're seeing is. It's not quite the blue that we're seeing in the distance there, but it does lean towards that cool um, blue-green. So let's try now gradually adding a little black. Now before I do that, here's a good idea. It's a good idea to value correct when you're mixing two colors together. It's a good idea to value correct uh, the colors before working with them. That means that each one of them should be pretty much in the same value range, else you're not going to get a, a true comparison. So I'm going to pull the titanium white into the black right here until I get it a similar value as I have there. I see that's not enough, so I'm going gradually here. I'll just pull some right here, and I'll gradually pull the titanium white into that until I see it going about the same value. So we're getting there. That's pretty much, mm, I just need a little bit more of the titanium, titanium white in there. Now I'm saying titanium white because it's more a more opaque color. It's really more uh, uh, a better color for, tech, uh, uh, for testing out color mixing, for doing color mixing experiments because it's more of an opaque color. All right, so now I'm going to gradually pull a little bit of this into the blue, of uh, the blue green, and let's see what happens here. As I pull this uh, black mixture into the blue green and I hold it up here, I'm beginning. You see, it's a, it's getting just a little bit closer to that cool blue that we see in the distance. Now let's try raising the value just a little bit. And then as we raise the value, add more white, we cool it as well as make it lighter. You see here we can begin to add, uh, we can begin to experiment now with adding more of the black and more of the green. So with every degree of black we add, we get it more neutral but we also get it cooler. Now it's beginning to go uh, more towards that gray-black and it doesn't really have that coolness that we have when we have the less black. Now the other thing I, I want to show you is uh, let's get some of this, let's get some of this on the brush. I want to show you the, the impression that we can get with this particular uh, combination of colors, the impression that we can get. Now I'm just going to put some color down here. And you see this is pretty much the same value. It, it's, it's not quite as blue as what I'm seeing there. And of course if I want to really get that blue I can add ultramarine blue to it and get that. But uh, what I want to show you here is uh, the cool factor more so than the blue. Now if I go into the black I get a little bit more neutral. You see what happens here. And we begin to feel that as even cooler as it's moving into the distance there. Now if I move more closely into the Viridian mixture here and get a little bit darker as we're moving towards the front, you can see here, you see how that begins to communicate or feel like that distant blue, uh, cool blue blue-green, bluish-green. Um, now if I come even uh, more, uh, uh, if I lean it even darker into this mixture of the blue-black, uh, now we begin to see how it could serve. I'm just going to put this down here without trying to do any painting, uh, or trying to do an image. We can see now how that could serve also as that very deep blue-green shadow area we see in the front here. All right. I want to show you what else that you can, what else you can do here to even emphasize that. And let's go back to the palette knife. So 
if we take, well, let's take, if we take pure viridian, let's see if I've got some pure viridian right here. Now, with the Rembrandt cadmium orange, oh, no, this is not cadmium orange, cadmium yellow deep, it is a yellow orange. So if I put that side by side with viridian, you see in this particular photograph, and we often see this when we see backlight uh, in, in the foliage of um, mountains or uh, in distance foliage, um, we'll often see that yellow, the, the emphasis of yellow or yellow green um, on the edges of the foliage. If we if we add that cadmium yellow deep into the into just for plain viridian by itself, I'll show you what we can get. We can get a range here, and uh, it's a good idea to explore very varying amounts of the uh, of mixing these colors together. But let me just show you what this gives. That's just with that. And I'll just put it down right here, and you see that gives that a, a nice yellow green just by mixing the uh, cadmium yellow deep into viridian itself. Now, if we add a little white, whoops, didn't mean for that to happen, but it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, add a little bit of white to that mixture, and it dulls it. It, um, I should say, decreases the intensity, but also makes it lighter. And so let's put a little bit of that here, and you can see the color. You see the difference in the color that we get there uh, when we do that. And then you can experiment even further by using the mixture. If you come with a come up here with a mixture of of the black with the viridian, then let's pull some of the cadmium yellow deep in that and see what kind of a yellow green. Now you see this is a wonderful way to explore um, various degrees of yellow green or various kinds of yellow green. Let's get that a little bit. There we go right in there. Now let's see what that gives us. That gives us even a more kind of olive yellow green. Let's put a little bit of that here. I just want to show you all these varieties. You see that one's much more olive. If we then add white into that, white in, that, no, I added a little much. No, there we go, right there. Now you see that gives us, and I said just a little bit more of the, the cool into it, and we'll cool that olive down. And now we get something like that. What I'm showing you here is not, it's not a formula to be remembered, but a process where you can start experimenting with uh, various, with these mixtures, and for in, in this case, where your intention is to come up with the, I'm going to show you this, there we go, right there. Uh, when you come up with your intention is to explore possibilities for getting a cooler gray or green as things move into the distance, rather than reach for the obvious, sometimes it's a good idea just to explore things that you might not think about. So those are some combinations I hope that you'll try out. Um, and I think that you'll have fun with if you uh, go to pixabay.com if you don't have if you don't have well this season in our in the U.S. Uh, we're not going to have a lot of green but you can go to pixabay.com and type in uh, landscape or type in trees or something like that and you can see a number of options of landscape where you can uh, where, where the the trees are moving into the distance and you can see them getting cooler and grayer as you're, they're moving to the distance. And then you might explore this combination for interpreting that. Now feel free when you're exploring the combination also, let me add one more thing to that but I'm not going to show you, I'll just tell you about here. Uh, when you're exploring that combination for interpreting the, the dark blue greens or blue grayer greens that you see in the landscape. Uh, then also, after you expo explore what this will do, add a little bit of ultramarine blue to the mixture. And if so, if, if the mountains or if the landscape is actually getting bluer as it's going in the distance, then the obvious thing to do would to, would be to add the ultramarine blue. So that's flexibility in color mixing. So I hope you have fun with that one. And if you have a request for something that you'd like to see me do a quick tip on, uh, drop us a comment right down here. Um, we have a whole array of video tutorials on dyingmice.com. 
check that out. And there's your quick tip.